I want to speak to you for a few minutes about the importance of telling my story. When I was 30 years old, I felt as though life was over, honestly, because that was the year that my husband, Brett, was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Now, he was only 32 years old and had never been sick in anything in his life more serious than a head cold. And here we were suddenly dealing with a life-threatening illness that completely divided past, present, and probably the future. I really thought that my story and our story together were going to be over. Um, to our a wonderful uh, amazement and good fortune with some excellent medical, medical care also, Brett lived an excellent quality of life. In fact, there were many times during the next seven years where we thought he might be okay. It was actually during that longest stretch of wellness, which we wanted to believe was cure, we certainly hoped was cure, that we decided to start a family. We had twins, a boy and a girl, Rebecca and Casey, who were born on May 20th, 2001. Unfortunately, and amid all really unbelievable odds, on the exact day that I became a mother, that Brett became a father, that we welcomed these beautiful twins into the world, Brett got a shattering phone call from his neuro-oncologist at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, letting him know that the routine MRI he'd taken a few days prior, the one that had been clean for two years was back, and there was cancer everywhere. It was just the most staggering collision of life and death all at once, truly both sides now. He hung on for a few more years and continued to fight and to do really, really well in spite of the low odds. But eventually he lost his battle to brain cancer when he was 39 years old, I was 37, and our twins just two and a half years old. So we were in New York City when all of this happened, and uh, I had the incredible gift of family, a lot of family support, wonderful friends, great community, but let's face it, if you've ever experienced a, a devastating loss, you can't help but feel alone. The weight of Brett's long illness and his death just was crushing to me. It felt paralyzing. And I knew that as time passed, I was going to have to find ways to step forward in my life to build a different kind of a future for myself and for my young children. And that's exactly what led me to Colorado to begin again. My kids were entering kindergarten. I was turning 40. You know, there's nothing like a zero birthday to make you think really hard about life. And I decided to take a leap of faith and move to Colorado. My closest friend lived here. And every time I visited her over the years, Brett too, we just fell madly in love with the lifestyle, the scenery of those gorgeous, welcoming Rocky Mountains, the sunshine. And Colorado just felt like a place where I could take a deep breath and the three of us could begin again. Now, when we came here in 2006, I felt a surge of hope and possibility. And that really is essential to resilience, as I came to discover. Everything I did felt bold. Everything I, I, I set out to, to, to learn in Colorado and to every person I met, every light bulb I, I fixed and I screwed in myself and everything I did around the house, Every new friend I made just felt like a step forward for, for me and for us. And one February day in 2007, about eight months after I had moved to Colorado, I was reading in the newspaper about a handsome widower who was a TV news anchor who was also being touted as, as one of Denver's most eligible singles. Now, he unfortunately lost his wife to pancreatic cancer just a year before Brett, and he was raising two boys, Ryan and Dylan, on his own, who were a little bit older than Casey and Rebecca. They were teenagers. 
well, you know, here I am making a new life for myself and my children, and I decided, why not? What do I have to lose? Maybe we could be friends. So I sent Steve, Steve Saunders, an email and a photo, and we wound up getting married and blending our families, and we have been married well over a decade right now. Steve is the... Uh, Steve has become a second father to Rebecca and Casey. I'd like to believe that I am also a loving mother figure for Ryan and Dylan. And we have created a new story for ourselves. Obviously, when you blend two families that have been torn by loss like ours were, we're always juggling a little bit the past and the present, but we've learned that We've learned to honor the past without making it the whole part of our story. So when I wrote my story, Both Sides Now, a true story of love, loss, and bold living, what the writing allowed me to do was to integrate the whole of my experience into one. Lots of readers and people who hear me speak at events, they want to know if telling my story was therapeutic. No, it really wasn't. It was hard, but it was also the most important thing that I ever did for myself and for my family. Because when I was able to write that story, I was able to distill everything that had happened in New York, in Colorado, and to make it a collective whole. And that is one of the hugest benefits of sharing one's story is being able to, to look, at, look at our lives with the sort of nuanced perspective that, that we need and to distill our experiences into one. So I feel as though um, when I wrote my story, I was giving myself an enormous gift, but I was giving my children, my, my family, an enormous gift, and hopefully giving readers and people I, I work with in my speaking business and my training business also the opportunity, opportunity to reflect on their own stories too. So thanks for listening, and I hope that you will watch some of the other videos in this series. And I hope that you will also give thought to the importance of writing your own stories because everybody has a resilient story to tell.